returning back to the channel. This evening I'd like to do the one year review of my R1250R Sport. It's been a really excellent bike so far and I just want to share my experience with you guys, let you know what I love about the bike, what I don't like so much about the bike and talk about general running costs and things like that. So stick around, stay tuned and we'll go through that now with you. It's a nice sunny evening today. It's uh, May the 11th, 2021. And I thought it might be a good time for me to do the one-year review on this R1250R Sport. Uh, it's really been an excellent, excellent bike since buying it. And obviously those of you who follow me know that I've owned a few of these uh, style bikes. I've had a couple of boxer engines in the past in the form of the R1200R. Uh, I had a couple of exclusive models. Um, but I, I decided to go for the 1250 because there were a few extra things on the bike that I wanted. Uh, the TFT screen being one of the major draws and obviously the new engine which people spoke about and said how much uh, better it was than the old incarnation. So I just want to do uh, a little chat really with you guys to talk about you know, how the bike's been over the year, how I feel after owning the bike for a year you know do i regret buying the bike do i still enjoy owning the bike do i wish i'd gone for something different and then talk a little bit about the costs involved in uh, running a bike like this doing the sort of mileage that i do which which to be honest during lockdown it's not been much because i've not really had the opportunity to do that many miles uh, for obvious reasons but i am hoping to to do a bit more lengthy riding this summer and hopefully make some trips over to uh, to Europe or a bit further afield if I can that's the plan anyway that's the that's the dream so uh, before I go any further I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel uh, and to those of you who have viewed and you make comments it really makes uh, for you know it really gives me impetus and makes me feel like I'm doing something that others value so that, that's really important to me so thank you very much indeed for everyone who subscribed uh, to everybody who's viewed and taken the time to comment um, so the R1250R Sport where do we begin well as we all know it's a, it's a 1254cc boxer engine makes around 136 brake horsepower and uh, it's an absolutely easy 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 bike to ride i mean you know you get torque and acceleration right the way through the revs right the way through the uh the, the rev range should i say absolutely no problems if you're if you're pulling away in a gear that you maybe shouldn't be pulling away in it doesn't mind you know if you forget to change down from third and pull away or second it'll pull you away it's not a problem so it's very very unintimidating um the balance of the bike is really, really good. In town, through traffic, filtering, uh, all of those things. It's a very, very good bike. It's an excellent commuter. It's unintimidating, like I say. Great low center of gravity. And uh, overall, a very, very comfortable bike to ride. Low speeds, pulling away from traffic lights doing all the mundane stuff this bike does it really really well without any fuss without any nonsense 
at low speeds, the only thing you must be aware of is that it is a heavy bike, so you mustn't let it lean a bit too far, which is, well, it's a schoolboy error. And I remember when I got my first 1200, I did almost drop it a couple of times because of the weight. Uh, caught on steep gradients or strange turns, uh, you know. So, but that's, that's kind of something you learn through experience. But I just want to relay that to everyone out there. When you're getting on these sort of bikes, they are heavy at slow speeds. You need to be careful when moving away. When you're parking up, you need to be thinking about the gradient, which way you're going to lean the bike when you're stopping. Uh, and, uh, you know, all those sorts of things, which they are common sense. But if you're not careful, it's very, very quick and easy for the bike to get away from you. So just be careful with that. That's uh, one of my big top tips, really, for people who are new to this type of bike. I think it's a, a bit of a newbie error, if I'm completely honest with you. And, uh, you know, it's definitely one that I've almost made. So, you know, be careful with the weight of the bike. That's one thing for sure. Um, so, like I say, I'm just taking a, a ride through town here at the moment just to really demonstrate to you that you know first gear 13 miles an hour stuck behind a bus it doesn't care it's not a problem it's not screaming at me that it wants to go faster it's really a very very easy easy situation and she handles nicely the brakes are very good the back brake is excellent the front brake is excellent um you know and they're progressive they're not going to throw you off you squeeze and you know, it gives you the amount of braking power that you would expect, nothing that you're not going to expect. And the input is basically, or the reaction is basically based on, you know, whatever you put in is what you get out of the situation. So, yeah, in and around town, no problems at all. Over speed bumps, the suspension is lovely. This one's got the ESA on it, and the suspension is absolutely superb. It's a, it's a very, very, very nice situation. Uh, to be in no problems at all and she behaves really nicely and you know then when you want to pick up quickly oh yeah she's there she'll pick you up in a flash guys without throwing you off okay it's not intimidating it's really really nice it's progressive power it's uh, all the way through the rev range my arms are relaxed they're uh, stretched out far in front of me. For those of you who are watching this video for the first time, I am six foot three. So this bike, whilst some people say it is quite a small bike in height terms, I suppose if you think about the GSs or you know other bikes that BMW do, there's no problems here for a six foot three rider. I've got quite long legs, and my legs are bent, but I can I can hold on to the to the belly of the bike quite easily. Here we go, I'm pulling away in second gear, no problems, it's all about the clutch control, but the bike will not cause a problem for you, you know. Um, yeah, so, I'm clutching onto the belly with my legs, I'm sat almost upright, and the seat is comfortable, uh, I've got good vision through the mirrors, it's a very, very easy bike to ride, it's not an intimidating bike guys don't think just because it's a 1254 cc it's going to be a maniac it's not it really will only do what you want it to do you know it's going to react nicely to your to your input okay filtering through slow moving traffic this is easy nice and easy not a problem at all uh, it's quite a easy bike to maneuver through and here I can see there's nothing coming around the roundabout. He lets me sneak in, which is nice. Thank you, sir. They're stopping. I slide back out, look over my shoulder, and carefully again, back through the traffic, looking for people cutting across like this guy here. So, yeah, filtering through the traffic, not a problem at all, guys. It's very heavy traffic this evening, isn't it? It's uh, coming up to 6 o'clock. And uh, we are leaving Chelmsford. Across, aren't you? And uh, yeah, it's very chock a block, isn't it? Look at the state of this, leaving Chelmsford. My goodness, not good at all. Not good at all. 
but a beautiful blue sky and I'm on the R1250 R Sport and she just makes everything very very easy for me I love it absolutely love it so let's uh, let's demonstrate to you now what have we got in front of us a Q8 will it keep up with a Q8 uh, yeah quite easily no problem at all There are some nasty bumps, but look, we're sixth gear. We're just over 70 miles an hour. And the bike picks up so quickly, so easily. Uh, but once again, you know, it's all about how sure-footed this bike is, how comfortable it is. Yes, there's wind. It's a naked bike. You expect the wind. Um, but actually, I feel like there's less wind coming at me than when I was on the uh, F900XR the other day. Sometimes no screen is better than a little screen. So yeah, it's a naked bike, you're gonna feel the wind. My advice guys is get a helmet that's gonna give you decent aerodynamics to help with that push against the wind. Okay, so yeah, we're into the, the faster roads, into the 70, absolutely no problem at all. This bike is going to cruise at high speed with the cruise, with the suspension, with the excellent tyres, the Metzler tyres that comes as standard on the bike. Very grippy, very good. No problems at all. It's a very, very comfortable place to be. And there is oodles of power on tap. So if you want to go faster, you can. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just not a problem at all. So yes guys, so the in-town riding on this bike is absolutely perfect. It will take you to town. Obviously parking up a motorbike is no trouble. You can park it anywhere. But how quick is this bike? Oh, it's pretty quick. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yes, it's quick. It's quick as you ever need to be. Uh, so motorway riding, look. I'm getting the wind like I say, but it's very, very comfortable at motorway speeds. The riding position is comfortable. Uh, no real vibration through the pegs or through the uh, handlebars. And quite easily going to uh, do many, many miles. Once you put your cruise on. And uh, yeah, away you go. No problems at all. I did ride to uh, Europe a couple of times on my old R1200R and it was a very, very relaxing experience. The cruise control is an absolute essential. And obviously um, with the advent of um, radar cruise on some of the bikes now, I mean, you know, there's no excuses really. You can take these bikes anywhere. So I love the color of this bike. This is by far my favorite color of the R1250R color schemes that were available when I bought the bike the blue white and red the racing colors of BMW it's very very nice uh, the wheels are excellent the valves that come out of the wheels for, for the for the air to fill the, the uh, tires up there they're really really good very intuitive and easy to use you do need an extender for the valve because a standard valve from the petrol station will not fit over the air valve and put air in the tyres. Um, I've only had the bike for a year, I've only tried to put the air in the tyres once or twice actually in all that time and I, you know, you can't do it without the valve, the valve extender. I've got an Oxford one that cost a few quid uh, but you know, you can use others I'm sure. So town driving no problem, motorway driving no problem. And on the lanes it's an absolute joy, I mean the bike just, it picks up at the moment's notice. I'm only in road mode at the moment, guys, by the way. I'm not in dynamic. Um, I prefer the suspension setting in road, to be honest with you. But, uh, you know, obviously it's down to the individual taste. In dynamic, it will be a quicker throttle response, a stiffer suspension. And it's really, really a great, great bike to ride on the lanes, on the uh, on the B roads. Absolutely no problems. 
a real fun bike to ride. This bike with all the tech and the fueling, which is absolutely superb, it just really rides so, so nicely. The suspension is excellent with the ESA. Uh, the shaft drive, apart from the joy of not having to maintain it and clean it, it's, uh, you know, the actual use, the way it moves the bike, the way you accelerate with the shaft drive in tandem, with the fueling, with the, with the engine, it's just a perfect match. It's a match made in heaven. I'm going to take her down some smaller lanes for you. Okay. So we can get an idea of what she's like down here. You can't get too much speed up. But it's lovely down here, guys, don't you think? It's absolutely lovely down here, but people do tend to hair it along, so you have to be careful. What I'm going to do is try and find a nice quiet spot to do a walk around. And also to go through the menus a little bit as well. Because I really do want to, you know, go through the menus in, in some depth with you today. Because there have been some questions from some people with regards to how the menus work and oh how the ABS works and stuff like that as well and the DTC because you can turn it off on this bike on the new bikes now you can't turn the ABS off but on this model you can turn the ABS off so if you're having a track day or something I suppose and you want to turn the ABS off then you know it'll do that for you that's not a problem We are now into stock, ladies and gentlemen. Stock welcomes careful drivers. Oh, look, there's a windmill. I never knew that was there, did you? That's a great big windmill, Phil. Ah, look at that. Okay, guys, so here we are on the bike walk around. And this is the R1250R Sport. This is the 2019 uh, model that I've got here. I've only got 1500 miles on the clock at the moment because I've not had the opportunity to do that much riding. So distinctive features, obviously the color scheme, the white, the red and the blue, the BMW racing colors. You've got the standard can, which is nice and shiny. Center stand, nice tubular frame, the Brembo brakes front and back nice gold calipers uh, you've got the um, under belly skirting if you like um, and then of course we've got the gold forks the gold forks uh, depict the fact that the bike has got ESA and as we come to the middle of the bike here you can see the dynamic ESA and that's basically the suspension system that does all of the magic it's really really good really excellent excellent suspension system so to the front here obviously we've got the LED indicators you've got the LED light uh, the R on the front of the uh, screen there and you've got the mirrors which are very very good and we've got the brake lever here which is adjustable to four different settings uh, and then we've got the clutch which is also adjustable okay all the wiring is really tidy nicely put together nicely tied together and uh, going down nicely into the center of the bike there into the frame it's keyless ride on this machine and I'll show you that in a second again we've got the Brembo brakes here to the front twin discs to the front of the bike excellent stopping power really really good no problems there at all uh, and here on this bike it's got the quick shifter the quick shifter is excellent anyone who's watched my videos you know how I feel about the quick shifter it's absolutely superb on this bike um, I know in previous incarnations it's not been so good but on this machine it's really really good and obviously one of the major attractions of the bike is the shaft drive and it's absolutely superb instantaneous power the fueling is excellent and there's no problems at all in uh, 
moving this bike it shifts it shifts guys we've got the uh, add-on there so you can put the panniers on the hard panniers which will click in here and here which is really easy to pull off and on of the bike which is really good keyless ride means that the tank opens without a key that's really easy it does stick sometimes it sticks quite often in fact for me but you just toggle with the on off switch again and uh, it's not a problem it will open up for you with a little bit of playing about okay the mirrors on the bike are very good very very uh, uh strong good visibility and no vibration when you're riding the bike which is good the switch gear you've got the familiar bmw wheel we've got cruise control we've got daylight running lights your hazard lights menu functions abs suspension indicators and the horn button there over on this side you've got your sos button which you just push if you're in trouble and apparently the calvary will come and get you you've got your heated grips your modes and your start stop button okay so that's uh that's really the bike in simplicity before we go through the menus and i'm going to go through the menus with you in a minute but i just want to talk to you a little bit about the running costs of the bike so i bought the bike last year um, i did put a fairly sizable deposit down so my payments are only 109 pounds a month for this bike if you don't want to put a big deposit down you can normally get into this kind of bike for about 200 quid a month 250 a month without much of a deposit the running cost petrol wise i'm getting 50 miles per gallon um, insurance i am 44 years old i've got no points with one year's no claims and uh, my insurance this year was 307 pounds fully comp so that gives you an idea of the running costs of the bike um, i'm not sure on the cost of the replacement of the tires but uh, they are fairly expensive and obviously servicing the first service was about 180 quid second service coming up and i imagine that's going to be something in the region of 250 quid depending on if it needs anything else but i don't think it's going to need anything else because of the low mileage so that's uh the running cost of the bike that's the walk around on the bike and it is a personal thing with regards to how you think the bike looks i really love the way this bike looks i love the gold forks on with the white frame uh, i used to have an exclusive in thunder gray when i had the 1200 and i love that look as well but i must admit i do like this better i like this one a lot more actually i think she's very very easy on the eye and uh yeah i'm very very pleased with my purchase So you turn her on keyless ride on she comes and the sat nav will come on also okay she's in neutral it's 13 degrees outside daylight running lights is on and if i wanted to turn it off i just push this button here and that disappears okay same with the heated grips currently on heated grip level one i can turn it off at the touch of a button just touching this button here heated grips and that will go back on one two and then away this is the main screen okay guys so now we're going to show you how the menu button works so if we push up on the menu button it scrolls between what you've got here so the petrol how many miles i've done the trip so far miles per gallon hours on the bike average speed and the bar the uh, pressure in the uh, tires air pressure in the tires okay that you can amend at the moment i've got a few less than what it comes with set up normally you can amend that and i'll show you how in a minute okay so that's pushing up when we push down on this button here it brings us into the menus okay and to move left and right we're just pushing this left and right okay that's my vehicle which will give you information i'll push down on the menu button and it takes me into that and it gives me information there about what's going on within the bike average speed distance you've traveled the fact that there's a service due on the 4th of june have service carried out by a bmw motorrad retailer okay i will i'll book it in very soon i promise so then we've got the sports screen which is basically just a screen that will give you um, a different look a different feel and it will show you your braking and your lean angle and our own inform other information as well
We've got navigation, which you can use via an app. And we've got media, we've got telephone, and then we've got settings. Now, the settings is where we're gonna spend a bit of time now. So we dive down via the menu button here, just push down, that brings us in, okay? And we're gonna do left and right on the spinny wheel. So vehicle settings, right on the spinny wheel. You've got alarm settings, so we can ha change the uh, tone of the alarms, intermittent to rising. We can decide if it wants a tilt center, tilt sensor. I've got mine on at the moment, so if somebody moves the bike, it will go off. Arming tone, that is when you arm it, it will make a tone and arm automatically. I've got those off, but you can turn those on. To come out, we're gonna push left on the spinny wheel and we're out. Now roll down on the spinny wheel, across on the right, RDC. This is basically the um, tire pressure sensor, okay? And I've got that off now, but I want it on, so I'm gonna put it back on, so switch it back on. And again, it's all via the spinny wheel, left and right, okay? I push left on the spinny wheel and come out. Lights, daytime running lights I have on. You can switch it off if you wanna switch it off. I always have them on. Uh, I just think it makes sense really. The more vision of you on the road, the better. Hill start control, which is basically the function that holds the bike. Mine's set to auto, but you can have it off or as manual or as auto, okay? And basically to put that into effect, when it's on auto, you just basically pull the brake back or front. And when it senses you're on a gradient, it will actually stop the bike. So that's really, really good. Then we've got the shift light which I've got on, which is gear shift, okay? Uh, so basically a light will flash in the middle, top middle of the screen there to let you know that basically uh, you need to change up. But you can configure that so that it's different RPMs. So it can start at, at different RPMs. So you can roll it up, roll it down. 5,000 is the minimum. <laughs> And at 5,000 revs, guys, the bike is going. So that's quite funny. Uh, end RPM, 8,000. And again, you can push that up to a maximum of 9,000. Or you can put it down lower if you don't want it to scream too much. So the brightness of the actual light that flashes, 70% at the moment. And the flashing frequency, how many hertz? So 8, 4, or 0 hertz and that affects the brightness of the light, I suppose, or the speed of the light, the flash frequency, so how quickly it, speed, it, it, it flashes. Uh, so that's the uh, configuration for the shift light. Then we've got dynamic pro riding mode. Now this bike has rain, road, dynamic, and dynamic pro. Dynamic pro simply allows you to mix and match the uh, throttle response and the DTC the traction control, okay? So basically, on the engine, if you click into the engine, there you've got rain, road, and dynamic. And then on the DTC, the traction control, again, you've got the same situation. You've got rain, road, and dynamic. So you can mix and match. And really, guys, it's a question of personal taste. You can go out there and try it yourself and see what you like, okay? And then you've got your reset button down the bottom. So that's the settings. And then we've got system settings. Date and time, units, language. Pretty straightforward. Connections, this is where you connect your phone and your helmet. Okay, my helmet switched off and my phone is on. So my phone is connected. And I've done a video with regards to the connections and how you connect things. So I'll put a link up here with regards to how that works for you. So coming out of that, then we've got our display. That's just about your brightness and status line content. So I said earlier about the information we've got up here and what it can and can't show, all right? So this is where you can edit that if you don't want it to show everything. And simply all you do is just untick. Push right to turn it on, push right again to turn it off, okay? And if you don't want it to show, then you don't need to have it up there, okay? And you can turn them all off if you want, or them all on. It's completely up to you, or just pick which ones you want. 
Uh, and to be honest, I don't need average speed, do I? I do need the tyre pressure. I don't care about my average speed. Mm, do I really care about my riding time? Probably not. Consumption, yes. Trip recorder, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe not, actually. I'm going to turn all those off, so it just really simplifies it for me. So that's that. So you can then... So basically now, when I go back up to the top, push up, push up. If we look up here at the top, I've got my mileage. I've got my fuel. So that's 172 miles, full tank. That's the total miles the bike's done. That's my miles per gallon. That's the bar. And then we're back to that. So there we go. I've edited that live for you. And uh, it's reduced the number amount of information I need to uh, worry about looking on the screen. Then you've got information, which is just telling you about your license and uh, whatever I'm on now. Software version, version of your software. And that's pretty much it. That's the menu, basically, guys, as, as, as much as you really need to know. Um, then we've got suspension settings, okay? So, this button here, if we do a long press down, and it brings up these two here. The left one is dynamic or road. Only two options on that, okay? Road or dynamic. I keep it in road because it's more suitable for road conditions, basically, for potholes and uneven road surfaces, undulations, all that sort of thing. And then a long press of the same button, so this is the button here, a long press will then jump me over to the right hand menu. A long press, maximum, long press, minimum, and another press takes it to auto. I always keep it on auto, and basically when you're changing this, if you're sitting on the bike, you can feel it moving up and down. Um, and again, it's a personal choice and depends where you ride, so you can decide what you want with regards to that. So yeah, guys, I mean, essentially, I know I've been a huge fan of this bike, and I've been very, very complimentary about this bike. I've spoken only good things about this bike. You must be thinking to yourself, Phil, what's bad about the bike? There must be something bad about this machine. And to be honest with you, really, the heated grips is a well-documented dislike of mine. Uh, and that is really about it, you know? Apart from maybe the fact that it is quite expensive. But you do expect bikes like this to be expensive. I mean, it's all premium parts. It's well put together. It's an excellent machine. And to be honest with you, this is a bike that you could get on, you know, pretty much six months after you've been riding. No problems at all. Um, you know, you could, you could quite easily get used to it and uh, learn how to use the power, learn how to ride the bike. And it's not intimidating, it's very, very easy. Um, one of my other favourite things about the bike, I've just remembered, is the way you put air in the tyres. And that is sticking out of the wheel instead of up. It's really, really handy. But you do need, you do need an adapter, which looks something like this. Okay, so this end goes onto the wheel. And that end, you put your air filler in at the petrol station. And there's the other one on the back. Okay, centre stand makes it really easy to clean the back of the bike. Yes, you do get a lot of spray off the bike if you ride it in the rain. I don't ride it in the rain, guys. I've got to be honest with you. Rain riding is uh, dangerous and I don't like doing it. And uh, I'm lucky enough to not have to do that. I know some of you out there, you've got no choice. And, you know, much respect to you guys. But myself, I don't have to ride in the rain, so I choose not to. Um... Yeah, so the only thing I don't like about the bike is the heated grips. That is really my only gripe. I have got, done a video of five things I love and five things I don't like. And to be honest, the things that I don't like are, are very, very minor, minor niggles, apart from the heated grips, which BMW have now released three phase heated grips for most models. And the R1250 RTR I reviewed the other day, they're now doing five stage heated grips but you only get those if you've got the heated seat fitted. So it's only on that bike, and I think on some of the GSs, you can get the heated seat. Any bike you can get the heated seat, you can get the five-stage heated grips. Um, so yeah, guys, you know, so th this is my one-year review of the bike. I wanted to run through as many features as possible with you uh, during the video. Um, and I hope that you've enjoyed this video as always. Uh, I don't know everything. These are just my points of view on how I feel things are. 
um, but I, I'm a huge fan of the way the bike rides. You can ride it aggressively, you can ride it calmly, you can take it down the country lanes, you can tour on this bike to Europe, no problem, you know, one up, two up, you can do that. It's not a problem. The bike is absolutely fully capable of riding thousands of miles, no problem. Um, and you can do it in comfort, in a really nice riding position. This is the best bike I have ridden, bar none, so far. Um, and, you know, as I get into the new season and take out new bikes, I'm just hoping that that is still the feeling I always have. But I just think it's an all-rounder. It really does everything really, really well. And it's very, very confidence inspiring. Absolutely excellent bike. So guys, just want to say a big thank you for all of you who have viewed the video today. Thanks very much to everyone who has subscribed. Really, really appreciated. So those of you who are viewing for the first time, hello, welcome to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. And of course, please do leave me your comments and thoughts about this video. And of course, any other video that I've got on my channel. Until next time, guys, this has been me with the R1250R Sport, the one year review. Take care, guys, and until next time, ride safe. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, really, guys. Let's just drink in the view for a few moments longer. Uh, in response to a question I had recently from one of the viewers on an older video of mine with regards to the functionality of the bike, um, I just want to go over a couple of things while my wheels are rolling. While I'm sat at the lights, I can't do this. But as soon as the wheels start rolling again, I can. See the green? It's the hold. No need to put my foot on the brake now. It's just holding. To turn off the ABS and the... Uh, traction control I think it is it's this button here on the right hand side you push it up once and it tells you that it's on the ABS is on and the uh, traction control is on if you want to turn it off just push the ABS button up hold it and then one of them turns off push it up again it turns back on okay so you've got to push it up hold it keep holding it keep holding it and the other one goes off as well then you push it back up hold it now they're both off okay to turn them back on long push up hold that's gone back on but keep holding keep holding the other one's gone back on take your finger off push up again hold they're back on okay so that's how you change the abs and traction control and the other thing that i wanted to go through with you was the suspension okay that's this button here on the right hand side below abs okay i think it looks like a fish you know a double-headed fish when i look at that but anyway it's a suspension rod is what it is so you push down once and that tells you the settings that you're in okay so currently i'm in road and i'm in auto for the suspension okay and uh road for the um, sorry auto for the dampening road for the suspension so to toggle between road and dynamic all you do is push the button once tap now it's in dynamic now it's in road now it's in dynamic tap one tap and it changes okay dynamics obviously tighter stiffer than road okay for the damping to change that Again, you can tap to see what you're on. Just a long hold down, and it will now go. So it goes to max, another long hold, goes to minimum, and another long hold, and it goes to auto. When you're sitting on the bike and making those changes, you can feel when you go to max, the bike lifts up slightly. When you go to minimum, it will then drop down slightly. Very, very subtle changes, but you can feel it as you're sitting on the bike. I leave mine in auto because then it just basically gives the best setting depending on what's going on on the terrain you're going over. Simple as that, really. Okay, so that's that. 